function notation is pretty easy to use in most cases, but sometimes when we have more than one copy of a variable or when it has powers on the variable, it's a little trickier to evaluate function notation. So let's practice with two functions that are a little bit more tricky than something like uh, 2x minus 1. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm evaluating a bunch of function notation is to write what I call a skeleton for the function notation. Let me show you it with an example. So the first function is f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. So you can see we have two variable copies in there, x squared and minus 2x. The skeleton just tells me what I do to some empty thing. So f of something, I'm going to leave the parentheses empty, equals something squared, so that's a set of parentheses squared, minus 2 times something, so 2 times an empty set of parentheses, plus 1. So that's the skeleton for this problem. And I can actually, if I want to plug something in, it's basically giving me a short form of that sentence in words. It's saying something squared minus 2 times a something plus 1. So if I want to put in 3, I would do 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 1. Another way to do that is to just write the skeleton first. So just write something squared minus 2 times something plus 1. Again, every time I say something, I'm just inserting and opening closing parentheses. And then f of 3, all I'm going to do is drop 3 in to those open parentheses sets. Then I just have to evaluate. So 9 minus 6 plus 1, which gives me 4. Be really careful with negatives in function notation because they always trip students up, especially if they're not writing out these parentheses every time. So again, I'm going to start with the skeleton. So I'm going to just say something squared minus 2 times something plus 1, and I'm plugging in negative 3. So negative 3, the quantity squared, minus 2 times negative 3 plus 1. Now negative 3 in parentheses squared, that's like saying negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. The negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 plus 1. So 9 plus 6 plus 1 gives us 16. f of negative 3 equals 16. f of 0 0.2. Again, I'm going to start with something squared minus 2 times something plus 1, putting in 0 0.2. 0 0.2 squared minus 2 times 0 0.2 plus 1. That gives us 0 0.04 minus 0.4 plus 1, 0.64. f of 0.2 gives us 0.64. And last, f of t. You might think, f of t, what does that mean? Just start the problem the same way. Make a skeleton, it's something squared minus 2 times something plus 1, and then put in the value, the input value. So I'm going to put in t, t squared minus 2 times t plus 1. And so f of t is simply t squared minus 2t plus 1. It's really just the exact same expression we started with, but instead of x's, it's t's. This would be a good time to pause the video and try out the expression g of t equals 2 plus t over t. And then you can come back and play it through and make sure you understand how to evaluate g of 1 g of 5, g of 0.1, and g of x. Okay, we're back. First, I'm going to write a skeleton for g of t equals 2 plus t over t. So I'm going to write g of something, that set of parentheses, equals, and then on the numerator, I'm writing 2 plus something, set of parentheses. In the denominator, I'm writing something. So I have g of something equals 2 plus something all over something. So when I go to evaluate g of 1, I'm going to have 2 plus something all over something. And I just put in the 1. That gives me 2 plus 1 is 3 over 1. 3 over 1 is just 3. So g of 1 equals 3. g of 5. I'll start with 2 plus something 
over something. Putting in the 5, 2 plus 5 over 5. So I have 7 over 5, or I could also write this as a decimal 1.4. G of 0.1. All right, that's 2 plus something all over something. Put in the 0.1, and we have 2.1 over 0.1, which gives us 21. And finally, g of x, again, just start with 2 plus something over something, put in the x, and you'll see that we're just rewriting this equation as 2 plus x all over x. We've just done a rewrite with a different variable. Okay, some of you have seen function notation before and you're like, okay, okay, I understand this just fine. So I'm gonna give you a little challenge problem. We can actually write function notation with more than one variable in it. For example, we could write f, open parentheses, x comma y, close parentheses, so f of x comma y equals x squared plus three y squared. So notice there's two variables involved now. See if you can evaluate the two expressions that are given, f of 2 comma 3 and f of negative 1 comma negative 2. Pause the video and try it, then come back to me. Okay, here we are. Let's try it out. Before I do anything, I'm going to write the skeleton for this problem. f of something comma something equals something squared plus 3 times something squared. And to keep the x's and y's straight, I'm just going to use a highlighter. The x is the first blank and is the first something squared. And the y is the second blank and the second something squared. Okay, so if I do this and write my skeleton out, when I do f of 2 comma 3, I'm going to have something squared plus 3 times something. And I can use my highlighter again to match that pattern. So I know that the 2 goes in the first blank, and I know that the 3 goes in the second blank. So I'm going to put 2 squared plus 3 times 3 squared. That's 4 plus 3 times 9. Remember to do your exponents first. And that's 4 plus 27, which is 31. And now, remember how I said negatives will trip you up? If you're not careful, I'm going to put a star by that one because that's an important one. Make sure you're using your parentheses. So something squared plus 3 times something squared. Again, I'm going to mark out which is which. So negative 1 goes in the first blank, and negative 2 goes in the second blank. So it's going to be negative 1 the quantity squared plus 3 times the quantity negative 2 squared. We'll do our exponents first. So negative 1 squared, remember that's like negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1, plus 3. And then negative 2 squared gives us, that's negative 2 times negative 2, so that's 3 times 4, 1 plus 12, or 13. So you see, we can process two variables just like we can process one variable. So the required inputs to the function are two values, x and y. Another question was, is f of 2 comma 3 the same as f of 3 comma 2? And the answer is, of course, no. If we were to do f of 3 comma 2, we would put the 3 and 2 in the opposite places and the result would be different. In fact, we already did f of 2 comma 3 and found it to be 31 up here at the top. So let's try f of 3 comma 2 just to make sure we get it. That's something squared plus 3 times something squared. 3 goes in the first blank, 2 goes in the second blank. That's going to be 9 plus 3 times 4, which is 9 plus 12, which is 21. Not the same thing. One of them gives you 31, one of them gives you 21. Okay, the final challenge. See if you can find a way to make this equal to 3. So we need to have something squared plus 3 times something squared equals 3. 
one way to make this work, and there is more than one way, there's a bunch of ways to make this work. One way to make this work is just to make sure that we zero out the first something and put a one in the second square. So that would give us zero squared plus three times one squared, and that should equal three. So we could do this with f of zero comma one. Another clever way we could do this would be to do it the opposite zero. So we could zero out the second something. So if we write out something squared plus three times something squared equals three, we could zero out the second something, which leaves us with just something squared equals three. And if you remember your math, you remember you can put in a square root there. So square root of three squared would equal three. And so in fact, we could have f of square root of three comma zero, and that would also give us three. There's a lot of answers. See if you can find another one. I'm just gonna recap this video. We learned about function notation. F, it's read F of X and written F parentheses X close parentheses. It is not multiplication. It's the input value. F in, of the input equals the output. One of the things that's helpful when you're doing function notation is to write a skeleton of the function. And that skeleton is going to help you think about how to process anything you have to put inside the function. Last, remember that when you have to process a negative value, it's extremely important that you put those values in parentheses so that you don't mess up things like squares on those values.